Central bankers are guilty of their intended plan. All actions to benefit the elite. It has been over 100 years since the introduction of the Federal Reserve, slowly but surely destroying the value of the U.S. dollar and consistently siphoning money into their hands. As the balance sheet of central banks around the world rises, we see the middle class disappearing as their wealth follows suit. The lies are told to us daily. But you came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to discuss, among other things, three charts that show the market is ready for a crash. We'll get into this today, first beginning with a little bit of humor. This is out of the Financial Times. The biggest U.S. banks are bracing for a tougher round of stress tests from the Federal Reserve, which could crimp their plans for higher dividends and share buybacks. That's right, the Federal Reserve is really tightening up. They're not going to let them get away with this another time. Well, let's all come back down to reality. The basic framework for this year's test was toughened up last month with the Fed assuming bigger falls in unemployment, that's going to happen, a deeper trough in Europe and negative short-term interest rates through the nine-quarter planning horizon. That's going to happen, I do agree, but to suggest that the Federal Reserve is acting like it's going to be you know, the parent or the teacher or something. It's just silly because they all work together. But that's all I'll mention for this video. These stress tests are just a joke because no matter how many times they fail, they still operate the same way. Let's look at this chart right here. The NYSE short interest looks to me like shorts are on the rise and that is a little bit frightening of course doesn't necessarily mean something at this moment but we need to realize that look at it where it was in 2008 and again at the same period right now you can see that when we see cycles repeating we have to realize that this could very well be the same thing happening yet again. You take those indicators, start adding them up, it's all circumstantial, but when things really start to add up, it begins to snowball and starts to make a lot of sense. So this happens to be one very good example. This right here is the S&P 500, short interest as a percentage of the float, and it looks to me like this short interest over the years has been increasing. And that particularly evident since, let's say, about the beginning of 2013 up until today, seems to be almost in a straight line upwards of people who are determined to get on the short side of things. And you can also see these two charts converging, which is a little bit frightening as well. Moving on to this, restaurants suffer a sharp drop, just like in late 2007. I feel like a broken record sometimes, constantly mentioning how this is the financial crisis part two. This is happening over and over and over again, getting back to the Lehman crisis. Think about how many charts that I have shown just on this channel. I haven't even covered all of the ones that I've seen, of course, and I'm sure you've seen many more on your own time, but this happens to be just one more of those, that we're back into the same mess that we were prior to the financial crisis. How many more charts do we need to see before we are convinced? Restaurants just being one small thing out of many. Everyone knows Fannie Mae, the state-sponsored U.S. mortgage backer, once again, check this out, is at risk of needing a government bailout that could shake confidence in the housing finance market. 
What happened just a few years ago? Well, of course, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were bailed out. According to this, they guarantee nearly $3 trillion of securities and enables 30-year fixed rate loans. So basically what they get into is a lot of the riskier stuff that the other corporations don't want to get into. So they, the U.S. government had to bail them out and in doing so, basically put them under their wing. They're supposedly not a government entity, but also at the same time not private. But they have their own problems to deal with and apparently the institution's capital cushion is on course to vanish in 2018 when it would have to ask the U.S. Treasury for emergency funds. So what's happening right now with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, what I should say what should happen is that they begin to wean off of this or figure out a way to get that $3 trillion off the books of the government. And of course, it's not really on the books, it's off the balance sheets, but at least under the wing of the government at this point. But instead, it's expanding, and that's going to continue on. In my book, I talked about it. In fact, giving you a little history, 1968, President Lyndon Johnson took Fannie Mae's debt off its books. With the rising costs of Vietnam, plus all of the other government programs, Fannie was getting too large, and this was their way of fixing the problem, by fooling the public. That's what I wrote about, and it goes to show you how nothing changes. Anytime there's a problem, just have the government take over. Private debt has been put into the hands of the public sector, and this is an accident waiting to happen. This is just another interesting chart I just wanted to show you, a little bonus at the end here. And it's about Germany, but they're not the only ones with this problem. Germany's demographic cliff. Europe's largest economy is destined to be the next Japan. Japan obviously in a bad situation in terms of demographics and you can see them on the left hand side at the bottom 8.1 births per thousand but Germany really is not far off and then you look a little bit further is Canada in the same situation and we go up the line UK, France and USA. What I would have to say is that they have these schemes running right now, Social Security, for example, and they're relying on a lot of people paying into it in order to keep the Ponzi scheme going. But we know that's not the case. It's not happening. So what are you going to do? Well, basically, we are going to be stuck with more and more debt. As the debt accumulates, they push that debt off the balance sheets. But does that mean the debt is absolved? No, absolutely not. It means the burden is simply increased. It's not shown on paper, but the burden is still there. And it will continue to expand and expand and expand. And eventually it will become so burdensome that it will all collapse. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. Last but not least... If you found the video informative, I know you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. If you want to look through it, just head over to Amazon, flip through the pages of the book, and see if you like it. Now, if you've read the book, The Money GPS, or you've bought the book, The Money GPS, I would truly appreciate it if you would head over to Amazon or wherever it is that you purchased the book from and write a quick little review. It would really help me out. I do appreciate that very, very much. Thank you.